To launch RespondCam Mobile, you'll have an icon on your desktop that looks similar to this. It will say VisiNet Mobile Client. You can double click it, it will launch. As this opens, you will first notice that um, we have this updater that first appears. It's a small box. It does always need to um, be running in the background, so please don't close it. If you close that, it will close out mobile. Um, once the updater has gone through, it may ask you if, if there was updates that needed to be applied. You could press OK. And after those updates were applied, your screen would open as you see here. Um, something to notice, we have our general login information here. Um, we can see our status is logged out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to enter my passcode. And you can enter your radio name and vehicle number. You'll want to enter those um, so that those are accurate. You're also able to add additional crew members, excuse me. So if you go down here and you want to add other crew members into your, um, onto your vehicle, you're able to do that. Then we can go back up to the top and we can press log in. After we log in, we'll notice a few things. Our status is logged in. It popped us up to a call. So anytime that a call has been assigned to you, um, I know that this was assigned to Unit 101 um, through CAD. Uh, as you log in, if there's a call assigned to your unit, that will automatically appear. Otherwise, you would just be brought into your message screen. Since this call is assigned, um, we're directly brought to our call screen so that we know what exactly we're supposed to be on. Um, as we're, what, what call we're supposed to be on. As we look at this, we'll also know that our status in the upper right hand corner is um, dispatched. So it will update our status if we were available, it would say AV. That's one key thing to note. In the middle of the top of the screen, we have our call number. So this will tell us exactly the call that we're on. Um, as we look at our screen, we have a toolbar similar to CAD, our CAD program. That toolbar gives us um, options just as we have here with our icons. The first icon is back. We can use that exactly like our Internet Explorer function. It has that same functionality. So we can go backwards, we can go forwards to screens we were previously on. Um, we have our message screen. So any messages that we would have would be visible here. We're able to see the call um, queues, so we can see any calls that are in the active queue, also any calls that are in the pending queue. Um, the active queue will simply show you calls that you are actively on. It would not show, let's say, for instance, 102, unit 102, we would not see their calls here. It would just show us our active incidents. Pending calls would show anything open. Then we have, um, here we have our status buttons. We have responding, on scene, at patient, transporting, at destination or the facility. And then we have our status available and um, out of service. So I am just going to go in to the call um, and I'm going to be responding. You'll notice our status went to from dispatch to ER requested and now I'm in route. On scene, um, where we could notify uh, dispatch that we were on scene. We have at patient, and we have transports. As we we progress these calls, please note it will um, document the time associated with that. So that would then go back to dispatch um, to your dispatchers to let them know the exact times. There's history with the call, so we could go ahead and um, document those. Once we're transporting, it wants our current odometer. The number of people seen and number of people transported, we're able to enter those. If the patient was a juvenile, we're also able to answer the gender. I'm going to scroll down. We can do a transport location or we could fill in just an address. So I'm just going to enter an address here.
and we're using California's database. So from there, we're going down in our transport protocol. Um, in our transport priority, we're able to enter there. We're also able to enter comments. Um, patient um, non-responsive. We can add those. Any comments that are add, added here will go into our um, call comments just as they would if, if we entered them into CAD. So we can enter all of that information, press submit, and you'll notice that all of that information goes into um, the comments. And then from there, we can say we're at facility. It wants another um, odometer reading. Once we're at facility and we drop the patient off, we can go to available. So our status is available and dispatch would be able to dispatch us to another call. We also would be able to put ourselves out of service. We could um, say there's a mechanical failure, even like a meal break, something like that. So that is exactly how we would go through a call. Once we're in the call, you could dispatch it through. Um, you'll notice our message light started um, blinking right at us. So if we go here, uh, it's just telling you, giving you updates, giving you status information um, so that you know that those statuses went through. So um, the next button that we have up top is forms. We can go in and we can enter, we have several activity log. So the activity log for this unit, we could add a comment. Um, since it is a mechanical failure, we could say um, check engine light on and we can submit. That will go into our dispatch log for the activity for this unit. Um, so we're able to add to that from our mobile client. We could get position updates if we do not have AVL um, or AVL's not working. We could go through and we could do p manual position updates throughout the call or as we're leaving the destination or our, our hospital to going to our post, we could give updates to dispatch so they knew exactly where we were. Active incidents, we could just go through and we could send queries. When we do these forms, you'll notice after I did the form, my message light on went on. So anytime I do a form, um, it will send back the response. So the form is requesting the information from the server and you'll receive that information back uh, through a message. All of the forms work exactly that way. So we could get active incidents, pending incidents, like just as we did with the active incidents. We could request premise information. So we could put in a premise name and it would give us all of the information assigned to that. We could do a location search or find address. We could do all of those things through our forms. And again, as I said before, forms will send a message back to the mobile client. Others, we were able to see units. Um, we would just be able to see all of the units and um, where they were at. We're also able to pop up our map so we can see our map. We could do a new message so we can send a message from this area. We could view all of our sent messages or we could log off. Um, those are the basic areas. All of the function we have here are also up through the login or th through the toolbar. Those are the basic functions that we have within mobile. It's very straightforward. Um, one thing to note is when we go to log off of mobile, we always want to go and log off here. Once we log off, it will prompt us um, to log off and then we can close out. We never want to use this uh, the X in the top right hand of our screen. Um, by doing that, it would not close down mobile accurately and we would have problems going then into login again. So we always want to log off. Oh, it's, there's a prompt because I have an out of service reason, so it's not wanting me to log off. It, it will want me that to be removed prior. And then once we're logged off, we can press the X at the top right hand of our screen.